Hi, today we're going to look at plane curves and parametric equations. It's going to open up a whole new world of curves in the plane for us. Uh, in particular, there's this website out there um, called mathcurve.com, if you've ever seen this. I don't know. But this is just uh, nuts, the, the types of curves that this guy has kind of put out there. I don't know if it's one person who has done this or what, but it's like an encyclopedia of every curve you can imagine. Uh, you see this curve is being generated by a bicycle, but um, there's tons of curves out there. Uh, you can play around with this site and take a look at them all and see how they're all kind of made. Um, a lot of the ones that we already kind of know are in here, um, but there's a lot more, right? So we're, we're going to find a whole new sort of category or new categories of curves that we can generate. Um, using parametric equations, okay? So cool stuff. Let's see, there's another one I like in here. Do, 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 do. That's a, the bike one's probably the best, I guess. That's Vermont's curves. Oh, that one's kind of funny. This one, do they show it? Yeah, <laughs> these are awesome. I, I think it'd be a lot of fun to construct. If I had like the math club or science club or something, constructing actually one of these physically would be a lot of fun, don't you think? And yeah, there's this thing, the shorter years. Okay. So we can make the, the mathematical formulas for all these, and you see I'm sitting here. Um, we'll, we'll work with uh, developing the cycloid at the end of the section. So that's, that's kind of an interest, not as interesting as these, but it'll give you kind of an idea of how we could construct maybe potentially something a bit more complex like you would see on, on this site. Okay. Okay, so uh, this one, epicycloid, re related to the cycloid, we'll be, we'll be looking at today where you have a, a basically there's like a, a pen attached to this ball. Uh, in this case, it's rolling around a circle, but for us, it'll be rolling along a straight line. Um, I don't think they show a picture of ours, but ours is too, too remedial for them, right? So anyways, uh, that's, that's kind of what we're heading. Hopefully that gives you a bit of motivation uh, or a bit of, I don't know. Okay, so anyways, let's dive in here and make some definitions. Um, we're, we're making uh, these plane curves, so curves in the plane, and we have that if f and g. So what we're going to do is kind of separate our functions into two uh, other functions, so f and g, and if these guys are continuous, with respect to some third variable, um, uh, called the parameter, and usually they use like the letter T for time. Uh, on some interval I, then the equations are called parametric equations. So you'll have f of uh, t, which is usually you kind of think of it as your x generator, and uh, then you'll have something to generate your y values, uh, and that will be your g function. Uh, those equations are called your parametric equations. So those are the parametric equations. The actual curve itself is called the plane curve, the curve in, in the plane. Okay, so let's take a look at just plotting these things. Um, and probably the first method we kind of always um, do whenever we have a, a new kind of object that we're trying to graph is point plotting. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So this is sketching. And uh, first we'll start with point plotting. Somebody in my office? No. Okay. So point plotting, and we'll look at an example. Um, X formula is three minus three t, and then the y formula is two plus three t, 
and we want values of t ranging from negative 2 to the 2. So you could literally just do a table, right? Um, you'll have t values, and then you could list your x values and your y values, and then you could plot it in the xy plane. Um, one advantage here for us, you know, not only with regards to, you know, drawing really, really cool curves as opposed to just parabolas and stuff like that, um, one advantage is we'll, we'll have a kind of orientation. So before, when you graph something, it's just the whole graph. Now it's kind of like with respect to time. So you're actually plotting it out with respect to time. And it, you could have like going forward, going backwards, depending on the orientation and how you uh, develop the, the graph. So here we go. Um, let's just go negative 2, negative 1, um, 0, 1, and then 2. And uh, let's see what we get, right? So you're just plugging these t values into the formulas for x and y. So plugging it in for x, I get 3 minus 3 times negative 2. So that would be um, 3 plus 6, which of course is 9. Um, this will be 2 plus, uh, I guess, negative 6, which is negative 4. And then it's just kind of like the equation of a line. It has a slope of, of negative 3 in the first case. So this will go up to, to uh, did I get that first one wrong? 3, uh, I, I copied it from my notes wrong. That's what I did. I'm sorry. But anyways, um, so the, the next guy would be uh, 3 minus 3 times negative 1 would be 3 plus 3, so it would be 6, right? So it went from 9 to 6. The next one's going to be 3, and then 0, and then negative 3. So it's always going down 3 over, the, you know, with one t value, it'll go down by 3. Um, then for the y-coordinates, you could use the equation or you could just use the slope. So the next one would be 2 plus uh, negative 3, which would be negative 1. But really, you're just adding in 3 every time. So this next one would be 2, the next one would be 5, and the last one you could, you could check. You know, it's 2 plus 3 times 2 is 6, um, which is, of course, 8. 5 plus 3 will give you the 8. Okay. Okay. Um, so no matter how you do it, you, you should get the same thing. And then you go to the x, y plane, and you can plot these guys. Okay, so um, the first point at negative t equals negative 2 is 9, negative 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, negative 4. The next point is at, at uh, 6, negative 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 1. And sometimes they want you to, you know, uh, label these. This is t negative 2, t is negative 1. Um, and then we have 3, 2. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. And we're getting a straight line, right? So uh, the next one is 0, 5. 1, 3, 4, 5. The next one is negative 3, 8. 6, 7, 8. It's right here. And not only that, we can label the orientation because the t values, um, we see we have t is 0, and then t is 1, and then t is 2. Uh, the orientation is kind of going in this direction. So uh, when you go to your homework, you, you'll have to take that into consideration. You'll have to think about the orientation, and they'll put a little arrow on the graph in WebAssign when you go to look at it. So you can see here we have one, uh, and it's basically just a line, and then you have to note the orientation. Okay. Uh, then they also want you to get rid of the parameter. So, so um, you can convert these parametric equations into the basically their rectangular coordinate um, brothers by uh, eliminating the parameter. And, and sometimes it's easy, it's better to do that because the rectangular coordinate equation will be more familiar to you at this point. So uh, certainly here in this case, y equals 2x plus 9 is more familiar than x equals 2. two. I, I mean, I, we didn't even know what the heck that thing was, right, when we first began. But it's just the equation of a line. So how would we kind of eliminate the parameter maybe in this, we can, we can just kind of leech on to this example um, and continue on with it. So, so uh, eliminating parameters 
and in general, what, what you're doing here is kind of going from parametric form into your rectangular form. Okay. So let, let's take this guy that I just worked with, x equals 3 minus 3t. And then um, y equals 2 plus 3t. And we could even kind of do this, although I don't think it's asking for it in the homework, you can also do it with the, um, the range. So instead of t, you'll have x. Okay. okay, so how do I do this? Well, I'm going to first solve one of the equations for one of the unknowns. And um, because I like y equals something, I'm going to, I'm going to do it for x. Okay, so I'm going to start with x and solve for t. So starting with uh, the x equation, I'm going to move the 3t to the other side and move the x to the other side. Okay. Then divide everything by 3, and you get t equals um, 1 minus x over 3. Then you just substitute that expression into the y formula. Okay, and it'll eliminate the t value, right? It'll eliminate the t variable, the parameter. So you get 2 plus 3 times 1 minus x over 3. That'll be then 2 plus, distributing, 3 minus 3x three over 3, which is just x. So ultimately, your equation in rectangular form will be um, negative x plus 5, uh, combining like terms and rearranging. Okay, um, to, to kind of rewrite your, your, uh, your sort of domain, um, and I'll put it in terms of x. So you could rewrite this as negative 2 less than or equal to, instead of t, 1 minus x over 3 less than or equal to 2, and then solve that thing, and you'll have a new domain. Okay. So first I'll just... Uh, add 1 to all three sides. So I'll have negative 1 less than or equal to negative x over 3 less than or equal to 1. Multiply everything by negative 3. So I'll end up with 3 greater than or equal to x greater than or equal to negative 3. In other words, the domain is going to be from negative 3 to 3. Let's go back to our picture above. So remember, the formula that we found is y equals negative x plus 5. And let's see if that's, that's this thing. y equals x, uh, negative x plus 5. Okay. So we should have a y-intercept at 0, 5. So let's see if we do. 0, don't move, go up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yep, there it is. And then uh, the slope, you know, it's the thing in front of the x. It's negative 1, so down 1 over 1. And that kind of, I, I mean, it's hard to tell because my graph is so crummy, but it kind of looks correct. Down 1 over 1, it's, you know, down 1 over 1. Okay. So I think it's, it's correct. And then did we get the uh, new domain correct? So it's going from negative 3 to 3? Well, that doesn't seem right at all. Um, so, so maybe I made a mistake then, right? So that would be my judgment. Um, let's see what the heck I did wrong. So I subtracted 1. Ah! And then this would be 1 multiplied by, neg by 3. Sorry, multiplied by, by negative 3. And I would get uh, 9. Sorry. And then this would be, yeah, negative 3. So it's negative 3 to 9. Sorry about that. So x is going from negative 3 to 9. And that, yeah, okay. So that's negative 3 right there. And this was 9 right here. So it looks correct. Okay, great. Uh, so that's one version. Let's look at another kind of version of eliminating the parameter type problem and doing some graphing. Uh, Let's look at this example here. So we have x equals the fourth root of t, and then y equals 8 minus t. So, um, you know, what the heck is this thing? We could do a chart. 
Uh, first thing to note is that t has to be greater than or equal to zero because of this fourth root. So it has kind of an implied domain. Um, so we'll go to zero. And then I'm only going to put in values I can evaluate without a calculator. So 16, nine, seven, 81. So we'll have uh, 0, 8, then um, one fourth root of 1 is 1, comma 7, fourth root of 16 is 2, um, comma 6, fourth root of 81 is 3, comma 5. Okay, so what the heck does that thing look like? Let's take a look. So 0, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's right here. That is at t equals 0. Um, 1, 7. 7 is t equals 1. Uh, 2, 6. Six uh, t equals two, and then uh, one, two, three, comma five. Eight. So that's oh, I see what I did. I was put, blast. So I knew something was wrong. Um, I'm supposed to be putting in t values for y. I was putting the x in for y, for t, sorry. So this would be the first one, you know, fourth root of 0 certainly is 0, but then it's 8 minus 0. Okay, so it would be 8. Um, that one was correct. Uh, so, so I put in 1, um, and this will definitely be 7, but here's the mistake. So if you put in 16 for t for x, it will be the fourth root of 16, which is 2, but then for the y value, it's not 8 minus 2, it's 8 minus... 16, so that's negative 8. And then it's not 8 minus 3, it's 8 minus 81. So it's negative 70, uh, uh, yeah, negative 70, um, negative 80, sorry, negative 89. Uh, no, that's not true. Oh, jeez, that's embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> 81, what is 8 minus 81? 9, 10, 11, uh, negative 73, sorry, or plus 73. Oh, no, negative 73, I was right the first Negative 73, minus. Okay, so sorry about that. Um, yeah, so the, the third one then, or t is 2 is wrong. That should be at negative 8. So it's kind of way down, down in the this two. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And what it's doing is kind of a, a parabolic type shape. Let's not bother with the other one, the other point. So it's going like this. And the orientation in this case, of course, you know, 0, then 1, then 2, it's going downwards. Okay. okay. Um, let's get the uh, rectangular form by eliminating the parameter. So uh, start with the x equation, and then just take the fourth power of both sides, and then stuff that into the y equation, right? So I'm raising both sides to the fourth. So t is equal to x to the fourth, and then plop that into the y equation. So you have y equals 8 minus t, which is now x to the fourth, and that'll be our rectangular equation. Okay. Um, a lot of times you'll use trig to eliminate the parameter. So another example. Um, you have x equals 3 cosine theta and then y equals 4 sine theta and then theta is ranging from 0 to 2 pi. So the way to handle these are using the, your Pythagorean identities. So remember, you know, sine squared plus cosine squared is 1 and then uh, tan squared plus 1 is um, secant squared and then cotan squared plus 1 is cosecant squared. Okay. So variations of those will get the job done. 
and basically just solve for cosine in the first equation. So you get cosine of theta is x over 3. Solve for uh, sine of theta in the second equation. Sine of theta is 1 over 4. And then stuff it into your Pythagorean equation. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. Right? So you have sine squared, uh, whatever, plus cos well, in this case we want theta, plus cosine squared theta equals 1. And then you could just plug the x over 3 in for sine, or sorry, y over 4 in for sine. And then the x over 3 in for cosine. And you get an ellipse, right? So y squared over 16, the a value is 4, plus x squared over 3, or sorry, 9, with the b value then of 3. Um, you could, uh, you still are going to need the orientation. So at this point, you kind of know what it looks like. Um, so again, uh, the y value, one, the a value, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. The x value for the b is 1, 2, 3. But we still need the orientation. So in order to get the orientation, you kind of have to go back to the, the parametric equations and do at least one or two points um, on the graph. Like, so starting at 0, I'll just go the pi over 2, and that should be enough to tell me if it's going clockwise or counterclockwise. So if I put in 0 into x and y, 3 cosine of 0 is just going to be 3. three 4 sine of 0, sine of 0 is 0, so 4 times 0 is 0. So this is where I'm starting at theta equals 0. And then at pi over 2, 3 cosine of pi over 2 is, is 3 times 0, which is 0. 4 sine of pi over 2 is 4 times 1, which is 4. So I'll have 0, 4, and my orientation is counterclockwise. Okay. Okay. Um, let's kind of go now in the other direction, kind of introduce that idea. So... Um, parametric to re rectangular, and now we want to go rectangular to the parametric. So basically going from rectangular to parametric. Um, then we need to go through the uh, cycloid, and then I'm going to do some my math lab, a bunch of my math lab problems. Okay. Okay. Um, Let's make this uh, the the uh, the video quiz question. Okay, so this is a video quiz question. We want to create um, an equation, create a par parametric equation for the line that goes from uh, negative 2 comma 1 to uh, 3 comma 5. Okay, okay. so it, it's kind of simple to do, um, and, and it's kind of, I could show you the kind of the shortcut, you know, um, the x of t formula uh, is going to be kind of the x part of the slope. So it's the change in x plus the original starting point. So x sub 0, change in x times in particular t, okay, um, plus your, your starting position. Okay. So this, in our picture right now, um, in our scenario, this would be x sub 0, y sub 0, and this would be x sub 1 comma y sub 1. Um, and they do this kind of question in WebAssign here later, and I'm kind of alluding to it. Oh, there, my mouse just threw up all over the place. Uh, where are you? It's this one. So they use x1, x2 instead. Let me, let me do that as well, just to be consistent. So this is x1, x2, or sorry, x1, y1, well, it's x1, y1, 
and then this one is x2 comma y2. So our formula for x is just going to be um, this x equals change in x times t plus x1, and the formula for y is going to be change in y times t plus uh, y1. Okay. So uh, y, why is that? Um, well, what is the formula for the equation of a line? The formula is going to be y equals um, change the slope, right? Uh, and you know, you know, traditionally we write it like m uh, x uh, plus um, uh, b, but uh, Using two points, how, how would we get that formula? It would be the, the point-slope form, right? So it would be um, y2 minus y. It would go like this. It would go y minus y, um, in this case, 1 equals m times x minus x1. Okay. And, and you could replace m, the slope, you could always write the slope as y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1 times x minus x1. Okay, uh, okay so let's kind of see if that's what we have. And of course, this is the same as the, what, what, what is the change in x and change in y. The change in uh, y is just y2 minus y1. So this would be change in y all over change in x times x minus x1. And over here, we've got y minus y1. So eventually, you would have y equals change in y over change in x times x minus x1 plus uh, y1. Okay. And that's what we're hoping we get if we kind of eliminate the parameter. So, let, so let's verify that before we actually go and construct this guy. So to uh, verify it, what you're going to do is um, solve this for the parameter. Okay. So you have x um, minus x1 equals change in x times t. So you get t equals uh, x minus x1 all over change in x. And then you take this thing and you plop it in here. Okay? So you get y equals change in y times x minus x1 all over change in x plus y1. And then you're going to simplify that a little bit so you can see um, it's not really simplifying. It's just kind of rearranging terms, right? So change in y over 1 times x minus x1 over change in x is the same as change in y all over change in x times x minus x1 over 1, which is just the same as x minus x1 plus y1. And, th and then you see, oh, hey, wait a second. That's that's just the equation of a line. So so it turns out that that's true. And it's kind of weird. Uh, I don't know. It's like you're taking the, the x slope and putting that with the x formula. And you take the y slope and you put it with the y formula, something like that. Okay. okay, so using that idea, then let's construct the equation of a line. Again, this is the video quiz question. Negative um, 2, 1, and then 3, 5. So um, our x formula, then, we need kind of the x slope, which is just going to be x2 minus x1. So that'll be uh, 3 minus negative 2 times t, and then plus negative 2. Okay. And then our y formula is going to be this y slope part. So the change in y is 5 minus 1 times t, and then plus uh, y1, which is, in this case, 1. Okay. Okay, let's clean it up a little. So x will be 3 plus 2, which is 5t minus 2. And then y will be um, 4t plus 1. Okay. Um, if we do it kind of the, the old-fashioned way and get a rectangular coordinate system version, what would it be? So it would be the slope we would need would be uh, 5 minus 1 all over 3 minus negative 2, which would be 4 all over 5. And then um, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 
So y minus y1 is 1 equals slope 4 fifths times x minus x1, which is negative 2, would give us y minus 1 equals 4 fifths x um, plus 8 fifths. And then add the 1 to the other side, you get 4 fifths x plus um, 5 fifths plus 8 fifths is 13 fifths. Let's make sure that's, that's what we get if we eliminate the parameter, right? This is the official answer. This is what we are looking for. Rewrite the um, rectangular, the, create a parametric equation for the line going from negative 2, 1 to 3, 5. That is done. Okay, that's right here. These are our parametric equations for that line. I just want to verify it, right? We want to make sure this kookiness results in, and, and I mean, it's, it's, we're beating it this to death, aren't we? Um, so let's make sure. Um, so I could solve for t. So I get 5t equals x plus 2. And then t equals x plus 2 over 5. And then plop that into the y equation. y equals 4 times x plus 2 over 5 plus 1. That'll be... Um, 4x plus 8 all over 5 plus 1, and that'll be 4x over 5 plus 8 over 5 plus 1, and of course that's just the same thing. 4 fifths x plus 8 fifths plus 5 fifths is 13 fifths. Yes, that works. It works. Yay! All right, so um, that was the video quiz question. Basically, you just need to show me um, this portion. Right? That's what you would show on a, on a test if that problem came to fruition. All right, so let me do the cycloid, and then I'm going to go back and hit some of these intimidating looking uh, uh, web assign questions. Okay, so the cycloid is now more related to what we were saying with the bicycle wheel and all that stuff on uh, mathcurve.com. This is the epicycloid, so it's a, a wheel rolling around a circle. We just want to look at a wheel rolling on a, state, a straight line. I wonder if it allows us to kind of search for cycloids. It's, it's better if they show me a picture than me having to draw the thing out and you using your imagination. Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> There's no imagination in math. Okay, so cycloid, there it is. There's our cycloid. That's the thing we want to generate. We want to figure out an equation for that guy. Okay, believe it or not, that is possible. And so let's go at it. So you pretend the actual graph is this red thing, this bumpy red thing. And it just goes on and on and on forever. Um, it has, you know, the graph has nothing to do with the actual circle itself. That's just the thing that's generating the graph. Okay, so somehow we want to figure out some equations for this, and the way to go about it is just to use geometry and a little bit of trig. Okay, so the cycloid um, was that thing I just showed. The parameter we're going to use is theta, and it's a measure of the circle's rotation. Okay, so it's the measure of our circle's rotation. And let me draw a figure uh, and start um, defining the bits and pieces of the situation so we can better uh, understand how we're creating the formula. So let me, and this is always hard for me to draw this thing, so I apologize. Maybe it'll allow me to do, does it give me geometric objects? I can kind of, you know, I want to insert a geometric object. I want to insert a circle. I need a circle. No, it's not going to give me one. No, so much for that. I have to do it the old-fashioned way. Okay, so um, there's going to be this a value, which is basically going to be then the radius of the circle, and then 2a will be the height of the circle, and the circle is rolling. I will do my best to draw a circle. It is rolling um, in this direction, and as it rolls, it, it kind of has this pen attached to it, and the pen is um, sketching out this curve, which I am drawing right now, and then it, just like it does in the in the picture um, on mathcurves.com. Okay, okay, so. Um, 
there's some interesting points we'll make notice of. Where is the center of this thing? It's right here. Um, we'll call that for value C. Um, this point on the actual curve itself we'll call P. And then we're going to drop some perpendicular bisectors down from C and P. Um, where the guy from P hits, that'll be called B. This point here will be called D. A lot of stuff, huh? Um, then we'll have another point on this line here from P to B. We'll call that point A. And the origin we'll call O. And then theta is this angle here. So you kind of imagine it's opening up like a compass and theta is then the measure of how far the guy is rotated. Okay. Okay. So one thing to note that this point right here, as it rotates around, the theta will be at 90 degrees. So you will have kind of unrolled half of the circle. Um, so this point right here will be pi uh, a, which is uh, one half the circumference. Remember the circumference of a circle is two pi r. So one half the circumference being unrolled to this point will be pi a. And then the height at that point is just two a. That's the diameter of the circle. And then if it goes all the way around, it's going to be at two pi r down here, um, comma zero. Or uh, the radius again is a. Okay. Okay. So um, let's kind of identify uh, what we need and. And this is kind of uh, back engineering. I kind of know what I need. Um, so, I mean, we need a formula for x in terms of theta, and we need a formula for y in terms of theta. In order to get our hands on those formulas, and this is a part that's kind of like, like I already know beforehand. I didn't come up with this myself. I'm not coming up with this on the fly. Um, the x-coordinate, so I'm thinking about the point P, up here, so this point P is at x comma y. The x coordinate is, is basically a measure of this distance, this red distance here. Okay. So that would be x. So notice that red distance there is the difference between OD, this distance here, and BD, this distance here. Okay, so x is the difference between um, the distance between O and D and the distance between B and D. And I'm using this in particular because I'm going to be able to get these in terms of theta. Okay. Okay. And then Y, which is basically, um, let's use a blue color, the distance, the vertical distance from the X-axis to the y, XY position, the Y coordinate there, is that's the distance we want. And that, we can figure that out if we knew um, basically the distance from B to A, which we kind of already do know, right? That's just A. So it's the distance from B to A, which is basically just the radius. You know, that's the same as the distance from D to C, right? It's, it's that distance. And uh, then we would have to add in um, the distance from A to P, right? So plus uh, A to P is this little extra distance, which I apparently don't have room for, but I was kind of smooshed in there for you. Okay. Okay. So I can, you know, low-hanging fruit here. B, A, I already know, is the radius, A. And then I'm going to need this A, P, O, D, and B, D. Okay. Um, B, D, and A, P, let's get those first. And in order to get those, we're going to use some geometry. And I'm going to zoom in on this picture here, okay, especially the 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 little triangle PCA and then the kind of parallel lines BD, P, P, B, and C, D. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to be working, trying to get um, B, D, which is in the X equation, and also I need A, P, which is in the Y equation. Okay. So for these guys, I note kind of this picture that I've created above, um, where I have B and D down here on the x-axis. And then these lines are parallel, so I can use like alternating interior angles and that kind of stuff. Okay, so that's uh, 
this is P, this is C, this is A over here. And this was a parallel to BD. Um, the angle theta is right here. Okay, so the first thing to notice is that angle APC, oops, and I accidentally got rid of that. So let me put APC in yellow. APC, this angle here is going to be what? It's an angle, um, whoops, wrong, wrong one. No, it's not that. Angle APC is right here. See, um, that angle is going to be 180 minus theta. Why is that? It's because um, angle theta is kind of sitting right here because of alternating interior angles, and we have two parallel lines with a transversal. Okay, so theta alternating, uh, what is that? Exterior angles, I guess. Theta and this theta will be the same. Or alternating interior angles, I guess is what they could call it. Okay, okay. Um, so to get to get this angle, this yellow angle, all I have to do is uh, subtract 180 because this is, uh, you know, 180 degrees right here, and then 180 minus theta will give you the yellow. Okay, okay so that, so far so good. Uh, then I'm going to define sine of theta. So what is the sine of theta? So um, sine of theta, if you remember from geometry, is actually equal to the sine of 180 minus theta. Okay, those two guys are equivalent. So I can use basically then um, angle APC and uh, in conjunction with the fact that I have a right triangle here in blue to redefine sine of theta as... Um, using the definition for uh, for trig functions as right sides of a right triangle, as uh, sides of a right triangle, excuse me, um, what is sine? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So sine is actually opposite, which is AC, all over hypotenuse, which is, I, I guess, what is the hypotenuse? PC. Well, PC is the radius, right? So if you look back here, from the distance from the center to the outer part of the circle, PC. That's just the radius, and the radius we, we have is A. Okay. So maybe I should note somewhere um, the radius, in our case, is A. Okay. So the radius is A. Um, what am I looking for? I'm looking for BD and AP. Well, well wait, so note that um, BD and AC are the same. Here's the length of BD, and AC is just kind of a, a translated version of BD. So those, those two lengths have to be the same. So this has to equal then um, uh, BD all over A. Then I could solve for BD, and I have one of my answers, right, that I need for my formulas. So BD is actually equal to um, A times sine theta. And I could fill that in back in my equations so I'm going to have something minus a sine theta. Okay. Okay. Um, what else then did I promise? AP. Okay. So for AP, I'm going to use cosine. So first note, notice that cosine of theta from our work back in trig is negative cosine of 180 minus theta. And 180 minus theta, again, is that angle APC. So the cosine of that angle, which is the yellow one I drew, okay, the cosine of that is adjacent over hypotenuse. So in this case, that's the AP we need all over the, the hypotenuse, which we said is the radius A. And you can solve that for AP, and you get AP is equal to um, A... Um, times cosine theta, kind of, 
right? And the problem is we still have that, that negative there. So it's this negative is kind of stuck here, unfortunately. You can't do anything with it. And then it, it carries over to there. And then you have to multiply both sides by a negative. And you get AP is negative A cosine theta. Okay. okay. Um, so what did that give us? That gave us, now we actually have the formula for Y. So minus A cosine theta. Okay, uh, then we just need OD. So to get OD, we're going to use um, the uh, equation for the, what do they call that? Arc length of the circle. Okay, okay so for OD, let me note, and again, we can kind of remind ourselves of a picture. is happening. We have this angle theta, and then it kind of was a little too close, than, more close than I wanted. Let me get rid of that vertical. Okay. Um, in order to get this, you have to kind of know that the arc length from here to here is actually also equal to this length from here to here. And it's kind of like you think of the circle as unraveling itself. And, and basically, as it unravels, you, you get the length. And I know it doesn't look accurate. I should actually push this over a little bit, right? So it's probably more like this. And then um, if you took this and kind of just laid it down flat, it would actually be this length here. Okay. So in order to get that length of the, the arc length of the circle, you use your standing room only formula, S equals R theta. So... Um, in this case, the R is actually A, and then theta, so S will be equal A theta. And then what was this distance in the picture? This was O, D, which is exactly what we're looking for. Okay, so O, D is just A theta. And then we got it. Okay. So it, it, what did it come down to? It comes down to geometry and trig. Uh, those are not really my forte. Um, so if you are super interested in this math curve stuff, you're kind of going to be on your own. I'm probably not going to be able to help you with it. But uh, you can get really into it and actually just just don't get carried away and lose your job or something. You know, oh, 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 oh sorry, boss, I was at home studying math all day long, right? Um, yeah. So just be careful. Learn what we want you to learn. Okay, so that's the cycloid. Um, those are the formulas for the cycloid. We'll be returning to these when we talk about uh, smoothness here later in the next section. For now, I want to go back to over to... Um, so the point of the cycloid is kind of just to tell you that we can develop these just crazy-looking graphs um, with a bit of trig and geometry, right? So if we want something more complicated, um, we, can, we could figure that out hypothetically, if we were so ambitious. Okay. Okay, great. Um, the last part that I want to look at is some uh, uh, problems and WebAssign. Okay. So some of these look kind of complicated for whatever reasons. Um, we've kind of handled some of these. So, so let me just go through and kind of hit a bunch of these with the time I got left here. So clearly, if you want to roll your own, you can you can go ahead and start sort of doing your homework. You can stop watching the video at this point. But uh, the the yeah the the this was the video quiz problem. This previous one where you're developing the equation of a line, the parametric equation of a line. Um, we want to uh, look at one of the ones, the problems in the homework. Okay, so let's look at number seven-ish. Looks like x is four sine two theta, y is seven cosine two theta. Well, this doesn't look too bad. This, you know, this is going to be a Pythagorean. So you're just going to solve out for sine two theta and cosine two theta. Um, 
and then plop that into your Pythagorean. So sine squared 2 theta plus cosine squared 2 theta is 1. So you get x squared over 16 plus y squared over 49 equals 1. Um, so the a value is 7. So it looks like it's either this one or this one. So you just have to figure out the orientation, and you do a table. Um, plug in 0, and then like go to uh, pi over 4. So at 0, it's going to be 0, comma, um, 7 times cosine 0. It's cosine 0 is 1, so this is 7. Pi over 4, it's going to be 4, and then 0. So it goes from 0, 7, which is right here, to 4, 0, which is right. So it has this clockwise orientation, so it's this guy. Um, then they want you to eliminate the parameter. I already did that. It's sitting right here. Okay, let's go to the next guy. So this is just another variation on that, that idea, um, number eight. So we have x is 2 secant theta, and then y is 7 tan theta. So this time you're using the Pythagorean identity. Um, tan squared plus 1 is equal to secant squared. Okay. So you have x over 2 for secant, and then y all over 7 for tan. So you get, uh, plugging it into the Pythagorean identity, y squared over 49 plus 1 equals x squared all over 4. Then you could rewrite that as x squared all over 4 minus y squared over 49 equals uh, one to get it into our, our standard format form for the uh, hyperbola and it's going to be oriented like this so you can automatically throw out that first guess uh, the the last guess those are both wrong so you just have to figure out the orientation um, is it going down or is it going up right so it's either going down and down or it's going up and up or actually, no, that's not even, it's going down, so you have to be careful with these. Down and then up, uh, or the, the other version. So, again, you're just going to go to your uh, two tables to figure this out. Um, and, and, and it looks like we could just look at the left branch, because if we figure out it's going up on the left branch, it'll have to be this choice. If we figure out it's going down on the left branch, it'll have to be this choice, right? Okay, so that trouble is kind of figuring out how do I get on that branch? And um, basically what you want to do is think of it kind of like you're, you're doing a polar graph. So if you would be here, your angle would be there, and you'd be like there. So that angle would have to be something like... Um, it's 11 pi over 6 or something like that. So 11, oh, not 11 pi, but sorry, 5 pi over 6, and then whatever. Or you can even do like 1, 2, 3 pi over 4, and then do uh, pi, okay, depending on your trig abilities. So if you plug in uh, 3 pi over 4, what is secant? Secant is 1 over cosine. So, so, uh, Cosine of 3 pi over 4 is negative um, 1 over root 2. So this would be negative root 2 when you flip it. Um, tan of 3 pi over 4 is going to be negative 1. So you're going to be like down here. And then if you put it, let me redraw it because I already kind of guessed at the arrow. Okay, so at theta equals 3 pi over 4, you're down here somewhere. And then when you plug in pi, so cosine of pi is negative 1. Um, and then uh, tan of pi is going to be 0. So you're going to be here. In other words, the orientation on that branch is going up. In other words, it has to be this, this picture here. Okay. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. And, and we already have the rectangular coordinate. Okay, uh, eliminate the parameter theta and, and obtain the standard form for the rectangular equation. So here we have x equals h plus r cosine theta, y equals k plus r sine theta. Um, so, you know, this would be x minus h 
equals r cosine theta. You're just kind of eliminating, trying to, to uh, solve for cosine. So cosine theta is x minus h all over r. And then um, y minus k, and it'll be over r equals sine theta. So using Pythagorean identity, it'll be x minus h over r squared plus, uh, you know, cosine squared plus sine squared, or sine squared plus cosine squared, either way works. y minus k over r squared equals 1. And that's pretty much what they have there. They just combine the, those guys over a common denominator. Um, you do the same thing for this guy, except you use the 1 plus tan squared equals secant squared identity. This is kind of the one I did in class already for the video quiz. Okay, so it's just a variation of that. Uh, let's remind ourselves how to get that equation of a line, right? So this we want a parametric equation that passes through 0, 0, and 3, negative 7. So it's uh, the x equation is always going to be the change in x, 3 minus 0 times t plus the initial point, which in this case is just 0. Or they always call it x1 on the, in the homework. Um, and then for the y formula, it's going to be negative 7 minus 0, so negative 7t plus oh, the starting point. So x is 3t, and then y is negative 7t. Uh, what else? This one looks like a little more complicated. They want you to create an equation for the circle with center 2, 2, and radius 7. Okay, and they kind of tell you that x equals h plus. So, so the center is always given in terms of h comma k. And uh, so we could write x equals 2 plus 7 cosine theta and then y equals 2 plus 7 sine theta. That seems pretty simple, and that's what they want. Um, let's look at another one, maybe, for any ellipse. And they give you uh, this one. The vertices are plus or minus 10, comma, 0, and the foci are plus or minus 8, comma, 0. So remember, um, the vertices give you the a value, so here the a value is 10, and the foci give you the c value, so the c value is 8, and from that you can get the b value, right? So um, this is an ellipse, so the formula for c is always the square root of a squared minus b squared, and so you're going to need the b value in order to complete that problem. So you'll have c squared equals a squared minus b squared. So b squared is a squared minus c squared. And then b is the square root of a squared minus c squared. So b will be the square root of 100 minus 64, which, of course, will be uh, square root 36. In other words, b is 6. So x, uh, and we need the center as well. Okay. So the center, to get there, you know, it's in between the vertices. So if your vertices are at plus or minus 10, um, you know the center is just 0, 0. So, so x will equal 0 plus 10 cosine theta, and then y will be 0 plus the b, val the b value 6 sine theta. Um, it looks like you kind of have to play the same game here. Um, so you have to use uh, your your formulas from 10.1 in order to get your hands on the A, B, and C values. And then you could just plug and chug. Um, so is that pretty much it? Okay, here's one. They want two different sets of parametric equations. for the rectangular equation. Um, this is, I don't know. All right, so, so uh, one thing you could do is think of the, the change in x. You can kind of get that. Change in y over change in x here is 8, right? So it's 8 over 1. So from your formulas, you have x equals um, change in x t plus your starting place 
and we could use the starting place as their intercept, right? You could use zero, negative two, because the formula is y equals eight x minus two, and the y-intercept is negative two, okay? So plus um, your x sub zero, in this case, is zero, or they always use x sub one, right? X sub one. Okay, and then y would be your change in y, t plus y sub one. So one of the formulas would be x equals and you could just read off the change in x and the change in y, right? So change in x is 1, so 1t one plus x sub 1 is 0, so plus 0. And then um, y would equal 8 times t uh, minus 2, okay? and that's the first equation they get. Um, then I believe you can go in there and you can replace t with like t minus 1 or whatever, and I think that'll work. Um, in that, their case, they replace t with t plus 1 in both uh, equations. So you come over here and replace this with t plus 1 minus 2. And I think, um, will that work? I'm trying to think if that'll work. Um, let's see. We can always figure it out. So y is 8t plus 8 minus 2. So y will be 8t plus 6. And yeah, that is the other answer they got. So you could just do kind of a replacement of t and put anything in there you kind of want. Um, sometimes that's helpful for orientation. So if you want the, the line to be oriented in the other direction from where it originally is oriented, you could kind of replace t with negative t. I believe that was kind of the trick, but um, it just depends on how much you're using the parametric equations. Um, this guy, yeah y is 3x plus 10, um, and then t equals 0 at 4 comma 2. Well, this is this will become your starting point, right, if, you, if that's the way you want to go about it. And then your slope is 3 over 1, where this is your change in y and this is your change in x. So it's going to be um, 1t plus 4, and then y will be... 3t um, plus 2. And if you plug in t equals 0, you, you see, okay, x of 0 is 4, which gives you this coordinate. And then at 0, y of 0, then when you plug in 0 for, for t, you get 2. And, of course, that's that point. Okay. So 3t, oh, they want negative. Well, if you replace t with negative t, that'll work. Let, let's just make sure this works as well. Yeah, they're both equivalent. T. There, there must be, there, there's uh, multiple answers you can use probably. So x equals t plus 4, and then comma y equals 3t plus 2. Oops, 2. It's not going to allow me to check my answer. <laughs> okay. But it, it, they both work. They, they both have to work. Because there's, no, there's no really conditions like on orientation here. Okay. And if you eliminate the parameter, you're going to get back to the original equation. So you could always check that way if you're worried. So t would be 4 minus x. And then y would be 3 times 4 minus x plus 2. So that would be 12 minus 3x plus 2. So wait, did I copy it down wrong? T equals x minus 4. T equals x minus 4. And then plug in the other one. Y is 3 times x minus 4 plus 2. So 3x minus 12 plus 2. Well, it still seems like it's not working, right? Because it should be plus 10. Oh, it's minus 10. Okay, well, that makes more sense. Um, 3x minus 12, so that would be 3x minus 10. Okay. Yeah, so it, it works. Um, your answer should work either way. Okay, uh, this last guy is, is one of our cycloids. Um, you can identify kind of the bits and the parts, bits and pieces from our work 
So you know that the um, the a value that you would pull out would be um, the the uh, radius, okay? And you'll see that when they factor it out on the x term. So that four is the radius. So it has to go up to eight. So you can automatically throw out, well, they all have radius of eight. Ain't that a bummer? Um, two pi r then for, they're all that way. Yeah, it's it's this guy right here is a solution. Oh, it's because these have the wrong orientation. They're going backwards. Okay. Um, as far as graphing these parametric, I, I think you could graph them in Desmos. I'm not sure. Um, I'm, I'm, not I'm not bothered with that. Um, I'm going to call the, vid the video short, though, uh, and just leave you to your own devices from this point on. Hopefully, I gave you a pretty good foothold in the homework, and you can get in there and get it done. Okay. Okay, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.